Oh, sorry, Are you going again. to let chat bully you into watching carnivore dieters today? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I might watch a bit of Frankie Boy uh, if I'm bullied enough. <laughs> I mean, I guess we're doing it right now, huh? I've been successfully uh, bullied into doing it. As this is the way our early ancestors have lived for two and a half million years. And if our early ancestors could make it into adolescence, make it into adolescence, make it into adolescence. They were free of depression, free of anxiety, free of arthritis, free of low energy. They lived a life that was robust and full of strength, health, and happiness. I saw this, right? <laughs> I saw this uh, on TikTok. And luckily, so many of the comments were just about the fact that, okay, well, our ancestors didn't really even live that long. <laughs> so a lot of the time, it would seem that, you know, these diseases that we see today, though there are other reasons that kind of play a part in this, seemingly one big factor is just because we are living longer. So we're seeing a lot of these diseases express throughout our older years that we wouldn't have seen if people physically couldn't live that long. <laughs> I didn't know lions needed trend. Oh, let's, let's continue, shall we? Please go over there. I'll smash like, okay? I'll comment the, the lads. Also, ancestors. <laughs> Love trend. Oh yeah. The health status of hunter-gatherers, whether past or modern, tend to be the main evidence that ancestral eating advocates use to justify the claim that humans today in the modern world should be eating like modern hunter-gatherers or past hunter-gatherers and that meat and you know honey and all these other past things that are more natural are what we should be eating daily for good health and it's weird as well like the whole like depression and did he say anxiety as well how do we even know that and anxiety is a very like natural feeling anyway these fears about your life that have just kind of as we've come away from living out in the wild they kind of seem i could be wrong but they seem to just kind of translate to other problems or well, they seem somewhat misplaced by our brains because, you know, like, like, for example, like with money, you could attach that to, to a fear of survival because it's like, well, money for us is a symbol of like being comfortable. It can be a symbol, if you don't have much of it, of your life being in danger. Whether or not these things are actually the case, I'm, I'm not sure. It just does kind of seem that way. But as for whether or not you could tell whether our ancestors experienced anxiety and depression <laughs> citation in is very much needed and longevity but after watching this video if you're intellectually honest you will understand why this kind of reasoning is so flawed and you'll also just have a good point to make toward ancestral eating advocates in general because this is the main kind of evidence they use when trying to justify their lifestyle Hey, what is going on guys? So today we're going to talk about Bear Grylls and a recent Instagram post he made concerning oh, ancestral eating is... and ancestral eating in general and why most of the advocates that, you know, advocate for ancestral eating use a motive argument that is extremely flawed. I, I don't think this is the, the Bobby part. No, because Bear Grylls, <laughs> I saw this. This is so irritating. Bear Grylls was like talking about all, he made all these claims about how good it is to to eat like a meat-based diet. <laughs> it was like, what the fuck, man? Of course, the guy who would happily um, <laughs> on camera drink the <laughs> the shit water from an elephant's dung. Of course, <laughs> I should have seen this coming. I should have seen this coming. To my knowledge, Bear is quite known in the UK and has been part of multiple TV shows such as Man vs. Wild, You vs. Wild, The Island with Bear Grylls, and Damn, more. he's done loads. I'll be honest, I had no idea who this guy was prior to discovering this post he made about ancestral eating. Oh, didn't you? I used to, like, ironically, I used to watch him a lot as a kid. I used to think he was so cool. I, I was like, hell yeah, Bear Grylls. I used, to watch, I used to watch him. But then, you know, upon being a vegan and based... <laughs> I look back and think, oh god. But yeah, he does like survival shit. He just like shows you how if you are stranded out in nature, how you should theoretically deal with that. But there was a lot of criticism I remember. I, I think I went off him because people were accusing him of actually like not even living and being out in the wilderness and there'd be like helicopters like taking him out of that situation and putting him elsewhere. Which I get, you know, it's not the worst thing to do but it kind of takes away from the, the credibility of 
the experience that you're watching. But one of you guys who follow me in the UK told me that many Brits consider him a joke. Now, whether or not this is true, I don't really know. Let me know in the comments below. I think he's now kind of seen as a bit of a meme. Not so much anymore, but they did used to use him as quite the meme. <laughs> he was kind of the brunt of a lot of memes that were circulating. I don't know, maybe like three years ago. After seeing that, like, <laughs> that comment, I was like, ew. Ew, no. It was all staged. Was it actually, was there evidence for that? Because I just remember the accusation. I don't remember whether or not it was actually the case. But either way, his following is quite massive. He made a post praising the Hazda people. Not really sure how you yeah, pronounce this is that, the one but I we're going to go with Hazda. And these are people who are considered modern hunter-gatherers living in North Tanzania. They are considered one of the last hunter-gatherer tribes in Africa with approximately 1,300 tribe members. So let's go ahead and read the caption of the post. This is interesting to me. Over 90% of what the incredible Hazda people in Tanzania eat comes from hunting and gathering around their camps. And they are insanely healthy, vibrant, happy, and free from so many of the chronic illnesses that plague our society, such as diabetes, obesity, depression, and autoimmune disease. Contra yeah, I'll be discussing with Bobby again. Um, we will be sorting that out, part two, because there was quite a lot that we didn't get around to discussing. So I can't bear him. <laughs> or me to popular belief they live as long as we do with much greater health spans and they are vital much later in life than western counterparts climbing trees and hunting all day well into old age so i was interested to see what they like to eat answer meat organs and fat from the biggest animal they could hunt but also understanding how they prioritize food was so interesting and the findings are clear the focus is on meat always animal foods first then followed by honey and fruit like berries then a distant fourth would be tubers or roots, most of which are spit out because they are so fibrous. They don't even glance at a, quote, vegetable. The Hazda live in a way that suggests that organs, meat, fruit, honey, and raw dairy work as a healthy lifestyle. And it reminds me that those foods have been the most sought after foods by humans for millions of years. Oh, vegans, have we never heard this before? Could they play a part in never. what allows their health to thrive? Yeah. Thoughts? Hashtag natural foods, hashtag ancestral, hashtag tuition. Thanks for your health advice as always at Clownivore oh, MD no. 2.0. Oh, sorry. I mean Carnivore, Carnivore. MD 2. See, lifting logic, uh, lifting logic, can't, he can't read. Okay. It's the B12 deficiency. He got that wrong. I fear I may have got much of my nutrition understanding wrong in years gone by. All right, guys, much to unpack here. And I'm not too familiar with this guy, like I said before, but I do feel a little bit bad for him when you consider the ending of the caption. I mean, he looks at Liver King Carnivore Aurelius and Clownivore MD 2.0 as really solid sources of nutrition advice. And at the end of the caption, he says, I fear I may have got much of my nutrition understanding wrong in the years gone by. This makes me feel bad because as we're gonna see in this video, he is still on the completely wrong path while now thinking he is now on the right path. So this guy is basically thinking that the amazing health of the Hazda people suggests that organs, meat, fruit, honey, and raw dairy work as a healthy lifestyle. The health status of hunter-gatherers, whether past or modern, tend to be the main evidence that ancestral eating advocates use to justify the claim that humans today in the modern world should be eating like modern hunter-gatherers or past hunter-gatherers, and that meat and you know honey and all these other past things that are more natural are what we should be eating daily for good health and longevity. But after watching this video, if you're intellectually honest, you will understand why this kind of reasoning is so flawed. And you'll also just have a good point to make toward ancestral eating advocates in general, because this is the main kind of evidence they use when trying to justify their lifestyle. Well, I will leave that for you to watch the rest of, okay? Sorry to, uh, you know, because it is a quite new video. It was a bit older. I had to go through it all. I thought it was going to be, because um, I, I know uh, Danny was going to kind of go through possibly uh, things that Bobby <laughs> uh, said in our little discussion that then ended up being a debate. Um, but yeah, go over and check it. it but yeah, Bear Grylls, everybody. Bear Grylls. <laughs> so ancestral. <laughs>